All right, ladies, here we go. We're going to look at chapter three. Chapter three is about systems of linear equations, and the first section that I'm going to do a video for is about solving systems of equations by graphing. Since it's the start of the chapter, I want to give you a little bit of vocabulary so you understand what exactly we're talking about here. When we mean a system, what we're saying is we're talking about multiple equations which use the same variables. Okay, so up till now, we've only been talking about equations one at a time. All right, we've solved equations that have usually just one unknown. We get it by itself. Now I want to start talking about two equations that use the same two variables. And then down the road, near the second half of this chapter, we're going to make it a little bit more complicated, and we're going to start looking at three equations and three unknowns. But we'll get there down the road. We're going to build up to that point. So right now, we're just going to look at two equations and two unknowns. What that means to find a solution for a system means we're looking for the values for the variables that make all equations true. Okay? So let's say, for instance, we got a solution, and it was something like x equals 4, y equals negative 1. Okay? If that were our solution, that would mean if I plugged in 4 for x and negative 1 for y in both equations, I would have true statements. Okay? Alright, so let's talk about how we would actually solve a system using graphing. Alright, so there's two steps. The first step is you want to graph both of your equations on the same set of axes. Okay? Now, this video talks about how to do the graphing method by hand. Down the road, I will also show you some tips and some tricks on how to do all of this with your graphing calculator. Whether you have an 83 or you have an Inspire, you can do this on the calculator as well. The steps are pretty much the same, except the calculator will do a little bit of the work for you. But nonetheless, you've got to get both lines on the same xy plane. From there, you want to look for the point where the lines intersect. That intersection point is your solution. Okay? So, I've got three examples here in the notes that we're going to work through together. And here they go. So here's the first one. We've got y equals negative 6x minus 2, and y equals negative x plus 3. So this is an example of a system. There's two equations within the problem, and they both use the same letters. Okay, So we want to figure out what value of x and y makes both of those equations true at the same time or simultaneously. So what we'll do is we will take each of these and we will graph them. So I just put up there a little reminder of how we would graph. Remember, it's in slope-intercept form, so that's beneficial to us. Our m is negative 6. Our b is negative 2 for the first line. So we'll start our line at negative 2 on the y-axis and we'll use rise over run to get a slope of negative 6 over 1. Okay, I kind of had to go up 6 and to the left 1 to fit it on my grid. But that would be the line. Now we'll do the same with the second line. My m is negative 1 and my b is 3, so I'm going to begin at 3. And I am going to use rise over run and go down 1 and over 1. And there's my second line. So now if I look, these two lines have an intersection point. It's right there. So what I have to do is I have to just pull out the coordinates of that point that I just highlighted on the graph that is part of both of the two lines. And that coordinate is negative 1, 4. So if we were to go back into these two equations and we plugged them in, okay? So if we make y4 for both of these two equations and we make x negative 1, We would get 6 minus 2, that's 4. We would get negative, negative 1 plus 3, which is 1 plus 3. That's also 4. So that's a way you can check to see if you actually got the right answer. If you plug back in, I'm not going to do that for every example in this video, but that's the foolproof way to check to see if you did it correctly. You can plug back in for both equations and see if they both hold. And in this case, they do, so I know I'm right. Let's look at the second example. So now the second example is a little bit trickier. Why is it trickier? Because the y isn't by itself. So we have to do a little bit of algebra before we can actually graph. So we look at the first equation, 5x minus 4y equals 12. So I want to isolate that y. So I'll subtract 5x from both sides and I get negative 4y 
equals negative 5x plus 12. Divide both sides by negative 4. And this is slope-intercept form. y equals 5 fourths x minus 3. There's the graph of that. So if you go back to the grid, you can see that I began at negative 3. I go up 5, over to the right 4, and I can connect and make my solid line. We'll do the same thing now with x minus 4y equals negative 4. Subtract x from both sides, negative 4y equals negative x minus 4, and then divide through by the negative 4. We get y equals 1 fourth x plus 1. So I begin at 1, I go up 1, and over 4, and again, hey, there's a the point of intersection. The coordinates of that point of intersection are 4, 2. So that would mean if I plug in 4 for x, 2 for y, both of these equations would be true. Alright, let's take a look at one more. This is an interesting one. We have 5x plus y equals negative 4, and 5x plus y equals negative 1. Again, they're not in slope-intercept form. I cannot graph these yet. So I have to put them in slope-intercept form in order to do that. So here we go. So we begin with the first equation. We'll subtract 5x from both sides, and we're done. y equals negative 5x minus 4. And then there you see the graph. It begins at negative 4 on the y-axis. We can go up 5 into the left 1, which is what I did here in order to make it fit on the grid. Now let's try the second line. 5x plus y equals negative 1. Again, only one step to get it in slope-intercept form. We subtract 5x from both sides. We get y equals negative 5x minus 1. And then we stick the line there. Same idea. Negative 1 as our y-intercept. And negative 5 as our slope. Now if you look, will these two lines intersect? They don't on the grid. If we keep drawing them out, do you think they would intersect? I don't think so. I think they are like two ships sailing in the night. They're never going to intersect each other. What does that mean? That means there's no solution to this system of inequalities. If the, the, two, point, the two lines never intersect, you have no solution. And that can occasionally happen, so you have to be careful about that. All right, so this is where we're going to stop with the video. There's some examples on the sheet that you can try as well. Bring them in, we'll talk about them, and we'll do a lot more with this in the coming days. All right, have a great evening, and I will see you in class.